Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to continue the comparison and review of this Triton Dual Dowler. I'm not going to cut any more joints with it. The first two videos should probably be a good explanation of why. I'm going to compare this to the Mathel uh, Dual Dowler, and this is the model DD40P. Uh, <clears throat> Honestly, I never expected the Triton to do as well as the as the Mafel, but there's because there's a significant price difference. Uh, these machines are not identical. Uh, just in power ratings, this the Triton is um, I think it's a 710 watt machine, and it runs at 17,000 RPM nominal. The Mafel DD40P, this one is a 1,000 watt machine and it's at 13,000 uh, RPM. And this was designed um, more for hardwoods and larger dowels. You can actually go up to a 16 millimeter diameter dowel with, this, with, the, with the Mafel. A more comparable Mafel would be the model to the Triton would be the model DD40G. So let's compare the features. Okay, this is the Triton as you saw in the first video, even flat. This machine has a whole lot of wobble to it. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I mean, it's fairly stable side to side. The Mafel in the flat position there is absolutely no wobble. So these faces with the, with the fence setting at zero degrees is flat. The other significant difference between these, you'll notice this has a bail handle. You noticed in the other video I didn't use it. I hold my hand on the fence. Uh, one of the downfalls of, of the Triton is this switch does not have a lock-on position. And, and you noticed me as I was drilling holes in particularly the, the hardwoods, I was really having to push hard. And what I found was that while there's some recesses here behind the motor, my hand was always wanting to slip across. So on the Mafel, what I found out is this both of these are unplugged, by the way. This ha has an on switch that locks on. And what I figured out that works best from this one is to just put my hand on the back of the motor and just shove it that way. The fence. On the Triton, you set this at 90 degrees as indicated by the scale. It's not 90 degrees. The Triton when you put this at 90 degrees not sure how well this will show you see no gap no gap no gap all the way across So this is actually accurate, and the fence is flat on this. It is not on this unit. Another thing you'll notice about the, tri uh, the Triton is that this fence angle adjustment, you only have one support. So this side out here is unsupported. On the Mafel, you've got one on each side. On the Triton, when you lock the fence, you have one knob. It's a round knob. It does have some indentations on it, so you can only get so much torque on it. It only locks on one side. On the Mafel, you'll notice this cross beam here. And when you lock this fence, you kind of have a T-handle type knob. And when you lock it, it actually locks the fence from both sides. So from that perspective, this is a much more secure lock than the Triton. The window for the positioning marks on the Mafel 
are actually adjustable because you can move that window side to side. On the Triton, this window is not a uh, adjustable or countersunk. I was able to get just a little bit just based on finagling with it, but uh, this is adjustable. This isn't. Let's talk about the, uh, the fence height adjustment. Uh, on the Triton, you have a rack and pinion system, which you know, on the surface sounds good, but this fence only locks on one side. Additionally, the scale, the pointer on the side, it is very difficult to see. On the Maffel, there is no rack and pinion adjustment. You have one locking knob on this side, and this fence moves up and down on two steel posts very securely versus the die cast um, system on this. As far as height goes, I don't know whether the camera's going to pick this up, but there's laser etched on this post the actual height uh, of the fence measurements, and they're both in millimeters. Additionally, this has a stop, a set, uh, stop arrangement to where you can adjust the fence height with an adjustable stop by this screw to various heights just from measuring the center point, I can get this fence six millimeters from the center of the bit. And there on the uh, Maffel, there's a mark here that shows the center line of the bit, uh, bit. On the Triton, there is no such unit. When I lower this Triton all the way down, just from looking at the scale, I can't get this more than say it looks like about nine to nine and a half millimeters which means that I cannot get I'm not going to be able to use this um, for five-eighths material very easily though I mean, we won't even be close to center now you don't have to be uh, at center but if you want to use larger diameter bits than say eight millimeters this is going to give you a problem with with 5 eighths material and it won't even do half inch material whereas this uh, Maffel will. The scale for adjusting the depth is adjustable and very readable on the Maffel. On the Triton it is it has a red indicator but the lettering or the numbering is black on black so you can't see that very well. As far as the plunge action before, I mean, you saw in the first video how I struggle with this thing. Basically, it's die cast metal against a die cast base. And I do want to show you this. And I did not mention this in other videos. But you see that I'm holding this down. And there is slop there. And you see that thing rocking back and forth. I don't, that probably had something to do with the accuracy of the joinery as well as some of the other issues with this machine. On the Maffel, there is a, a pose, there's hardened steel posts that this thing rides on. And let's just see how this goes. There is basically no movement there as far as ease of motion probably should take the bits out of this, but this is very easy to plunge down. And even after my fix, this is much, requires much greater force to push down than the uh, Maffel. So those are the basic differences. Uh, I forgot to mention that the, that the fence lock also uh, locks on both posts, as you can see from this uh, uh, clamping system. So this locks very securely. I've never had this thing slip on me. I pulled the rubber pads out of the Triton unit. It just causes way too much uh, wobble and misalignment of the dowel joints and that's really critical for that that be right on. The um, 
the fence on the Triton is not milled. It is milled on the Mafel. For the Mafel, there are several options available, or actually you have several indexing options. One is Mafel actually makes a template that engages with these, uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure what they call them. They look like dentil molding. Uh, the Triton has those, but they don't make a, uh, make a um, rail that fits. I'll show you the rail later. The uh, indexing pins, you can index. This is 16 millimeters from the center of each bit. It's right on. And you'll notice these other, there's another indentation here with some holes in it. And the Mafel comes with various index pins. Comes with four different sizes. Flips in here and you only use it on one side. And this provides you the ability now, the, obviously, these are not spring-loaded. It provides you the ability to index, and this will give you, looks like about a 5-millimeter hole at um, 32 millimeters from the first bit, and you can move it over to the other side. And these work extremely well. At first, I was, I was kind of questioning that, uh, the usefulness of this, but uh, after some use, it worked out really well. Okay, this is the Mafel uh, rail. Uh, there, there's this rail, which is it. I think it'll do 600, about 600 millimeters long, or 24 inches. It's got a clamp built in it. There's also a, an extension rail available. These are optional. They are kind of expensive. This particular piece here costs more than the Triton Dowler altogether. But it has the ability to index, and there's minimal play there. And on the bottom side, you can also index that way. The first thing I'm going to do is use the, the Mafel with the, with the indexing rail to do a construction joint for, say, a cabinet. And basically, I, what I want to do is create a joint such as you would see in a cabinet. It basically looks like this. And all I'm doing is making a mark so that I can align my jig. And I'm just going to align this rail with these two marks. And before I plug this in, I need to change the bit size because there's five millimeter bits on that. And I'm not going to show you that. OK, I've replaced the bits with. Uh, 5 millimeter bits with 8 millimeter. I've re zeroed the scale. Set this thing up for a 16 millimeter boring depth. And uh, now it should be ready to go. Yeah, I may have screwed up that first set of holes in my exuberance. I, I did it referencing, did the holes referencing the inside of the cabinet instead, instead of the outside. We'll see how it goes anyway. So I've got the rail set up here to build, uh, drill holes into the side of the panel. And we'll just do the same thing. Again, line up my center mark. Make sure I get in the right one. Okay, let's see how we did. Okay, and remember from before, 
I had to uh, hammer this thing home with the because of the misalignment and this went in just by hand and actually it did come out flush on the bottom so that that uh, it's flush on the top too let me show it to you that's between the two looks like point 0.1, point 0.01 there or point 0.1, point 0.2, point maybe a tenth of a millimeter and on the on the bottom this is perfectly flush on the bottom this is perfectly flush Let me show you that so if I can get so this worked out well see how it is for square and it is square what I'm going to do is make a joint on this end with a fell I'm going to use these indexing pins Probably put the vacuum on. Okay, so zero this, and I'm less than, it looks like 0.15 millimeters difference in height between here. Top and bottom, these are flush, hard to argue with that. Okay, let's just make a similar joint with the ash and the white oak. One thing with this, you've got to be careful because you want to catch on those spring-loaded pins. And I almost did it there. So that was in ash. I mean, it just did so much, so much faster than the, uh, than the Triton did. So here... I'm going to reference off of this edge, so I need to move my locating pin to the opposite side. Almost did it again. Triton or with the Triton I had to push really hard with this Mafel it was so much faster and easier
And here again, see if I can get it in camera here. See how, I mean, it is flush on both sides. And it's right on on the top. Maybe just a little, little shallow here. Let's see how it looks. Zero it. Point one two millimeters difference. Flush here, let's see how flat it is. Here before we talked about the Triton here. This is the second Triton joint. You notice the rock there? The flex. This is with the Mafel. There is nothing. It is perfectly, it's a perfect joint. So I hope you've enjoyed this comparison between the Triton dual dowel joiner and the Mafel DD40 joiner dual doweler. Uh, there's obviously a significant price difference between these two machines. I never expected the Triton to perform as well as the Mafel just because of the price. What, I, what really surprised me is how poorly this, the Triton joiner made joints. And I'm just going to leave you with uh, some pictures of what uh, was taken from the last videos. Uh, the, the proof is in the joinery. So I do appreciate any questions, comments, and I do like your subscriptions and likes. So. Thank you and have a great weekend.